Hi guys, this is Ms. Esmendi, and today I'm going to tell you about the differences between physical and chemical change and how you can tell them apart. So physical change is when molecules change how they interact with each other. So it doesn't change the molecule itself. No bonds are made, no bonds are broken. It's just how the molecules interact. So for example, here's an ice crystal right here, and you can see that there are still the little water molecules that are right here. So it's oxygen, hydrogen, hydrogen, and the water model molecules are the same as the water molecules that are in regular liquid water. Okay, so it's the same molecule. The only thing that's happened is that how the molecules interact is different. So here in the ice, they have a formalized stiff crystal structure. And in the water, they're sort of irregular and they're closer together. And these uh, connections between them are looser. Okay, but it doesn't change the molecule itself. So uh, in contrast, chemical change is when molecules or atoms change into something new. So either atoms change into molecules, molecules change to atoms, or a molecule changes into a different kind of molecule. Okay, but importantly, it's making or breaking bonds. That's the chemical change. So here we've got hydrogen and oxygen, and the hydrogen are in hydrogen molecules. So hydrogen is bonded with another hydrogen and the oxygen is in an oxygen molecule. So one oxygen atom bonded to another oxygen atom. So if they change into water, then uh, that makes a totally new molecule, the water mo molecule, which is extremely different the, from hydrogen and oxygen. Both of these are very explosive, very flammable. And water is not explosive or flammable. Uh, it's a different shape. It has different properties. All kinds of things are different. And definitely uh, bonds were made and broken, both. Now, it doesn't have to be making and breaking bonds, but at least one of these for chemical change to happen. OK, but then uh, figuring out when this has happened on our human scale, just making regular human observations is a little more tricky because we can't see the, uh, the atoms and the molecules directly uh, to see what has changed about them. But we can see uh, and see if properties have changed. So in physical change, the product, the thing that you get at the end, still has a lot of the same properties, like the thing that you get will have uh, the same melting point, it may have the same color. Uh, a lot of things will be the same about it. Um, in chemical change, the product will have different properties. It may, it will have a different melting point for sure. It may have a different color. There may be all, it may be in a different state also. Um, oh, that's complex. I'm not going to talk about that like this. Um, but these are some different things that you can look at. We're going to go over some more things that you can look at. So clues that there's a chemical change. Now, um, there's nothing that's like 100% going to tell you if it's a chemical change. Um, but there are some clues, some reasonable things that you could say, well, that's probably a chemical change. OK, I'm going to show you some examples. Um, because of the nature of recording this, I can't do it in here, but I'm going to do it here in YouTube. Okay, so here's a chemical change that we're going to talk about, which is color change. Oh, I should say, uh, when I say color change, I mean not blue plus yellow equals green. That's not a chemical change. That's does not the color change I'm talking about. Okay, because there you're just seeing the blue and the yellow at the same time makes it green. It's just sort of like mixing those two colors and the colors themselves have not changed. OK, this is not what I'm talking about. I am talking about something like this. All right. So right now, this person is uh, putting some red cabbage. It's purple, but they call it red. Um, and it's going to extract the purple chemical out of there because it has some interesting properties. OK, so he's going to put this with some water and microwave it. OK, and you're going to microwave this for two minutes and I don't want to watch this for two minutes. Okay. So what you get out is this sort of 
purpley liquid. This is the, he's taking the leaves out and that's like the, uh, an extract of the purple chemical that was in the purple cabbage. Okay, and it has some neat properties. Okay, so notice here, we have four clear colorless liquids. Uh, remember that there's a purple chemical that is in this, uh, this flask, okay? Remember that it was purple. Remember that these were all clear, colorless, and see what happens. Okay, so the purple goes to blue in that liquid. This is taking too long. Vinegar and water. It's a different color, okay? So not the same color as either of them before and then so this green and so these chemicals even though they look the same they were very different okay and that's lye and water lye is a um, um it's the main component in drano so it's a very um toxic chemical um anyway so these changed colors with the cabbage juice um, and that is something you can even try at home. If you ever get red cabbage, you can do that same thing where you just take some water, kind of chop it up and um, uh, pour boiling water on it or uh, cook it in the microwave a little bit and get that purple liquid and kind of try testing it, like mix it a little bit with different things in your household. Okay. So that's an example of a color change. Another clue that there's a chemical change um, will be a gas release. Now that um, could be a smell. So like the, the smell of toast is different than the smell of bread. Okay, so a, a smell being released, that's a clue that there's a chemical change. Another clue that there could be a chemical change is bubbling. All right, so I'm gonna look at some bubbling here for a second. Okay, so here are some bubbles being released from different things being mixed together. Um, you have to kind of watch out for bubbles, though, because there are some times when bubbles are released and it's not a chemical change. Um, things like boiling water, that's not a chemical change. You know, that's some of the air being released from within the water. But these, this was a liquid uh, with no bubbles or like the bubbles going out of soda pop that's not a chemical change but like these things like seashells being put into acid and this is zinc metal being put into acid and it releases hydrogen bubbles lots of metals if they're put into an acid they give off hydrogen because the acid the hydrogen and the acid is the bubbles it's a good way to get hydrogen actually okay so bubble 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 that's one way that you can say, well, that might be a chemical change. Okay, clues that there's a chemical change could be that it's, uh, you see a precipitate, a precipitate. Now that's a different word that you may not have heard of before. A precipitate in chemistry uh, means, usually it means you mix two liquids and you suddenly get a solid, okay? And a solid, may not just be like a chunk falling out a solid uh there's also evidence of a solid if it's just an opaque looking liquid okay because solutions are clear i'm, I'm going to show you over here you can see a little bit better okay now look at this okay so see up here where there's a little drop of oh that's better uh, a drop of clear liquid, and then there's a clear liquid down here. Now, these are different chemicals. You would not be able to tell. But so watch this drop when it falls into this liquid. Watch what happens. Pow! Okay, that's something different happening. You get a color change, but you also get that this becomes more opaque. It looks like a smoke or something. And what that is, is little tiny pieces of a solid, a different solid. So that's the precipitate. So you may not always see stuff falling down. It may just 
turn from clear to cloudy. Okay, so that chemical reaction is happening right there. All right, so that's number three, that's precipitate. Um, oh, that one's pretty too. Yeah, I'm gonna show you that one too, okay. So here are some other precipitates being formed so that they're not all just like that yellow one. Okay, so this is this is showing what's happening as a chemical formula, um, or a chemical uh, uh, equation. Okay, and you can see something even happened that changed color there. So there's barium chloride and potassium sulfate and you get barium sulfate so this if you get something that doesn't dissolve in that liquid you get a precipitate and they can be all kinds of different things but they do look they look cool they look sort of like smoke and you can see it's kind of falling out these are relatively heavy pieces so it's kind of falling down you can see particles where's the pretty one? Oh, here this is neat okay now look this happens so fast that as the drop comes down, it forms a solid around the droplet, like it reacts that fast and it connects together. So that's cool. Okay. All right, so number four clue that there's a chemical change would be a change in energy. So that means it gets hotter or colder. And I don't mean when it gets hotter or colder that, you know, like you heated it up. That's not what I mean. Like if you, you heat something up with a flame, that doesn't count as it getting hotter or colder, okay? By itself would be the thing. So here I'm gonna show you. Okay, right here, this kind of a dark purplish blackish powder is called potassium permanganate and it's so pretty. Um, but it's like a, a purple powder. It's just room temperature, whatever. And then here, coming down, all right, so what they're gonna add in here is some glycerin. And glycerin is, uh, you know, fairly inert. Glycerin's a, main, a big component in like hand lotion and stuff. You can eat it. They put it sometimes in white bread as a, as a moisturizer. So it's perfectly harmless kind of chemical. But if you put just two drops, in this bowl. Now this is going to take a second. Okay, so this room temperature, inert liquid, powder that was doing nothing. Oh, and now what's happening? What's happening? Oh, it burst into flame. Okay, so just by those two chemicals mixing together, they gave off enough energy that there was flame. Okay, nobody had to heat anything up. It was just them mixing together. It really that reaction released so much energy that it burst into flames. Okay, let's go back to this. Okay, so summing up, let me get this here pointer, put that away. Um, how to tell chemical change from physical change? Here are your hints. They're not going to be a hundred percent. Okay, chemical change here, the four we talked about. A color change, a gas release, which would be bubbles or a smell, a precipitate, or an energy change where it gets hot or cold by itself, okay? Um, that's also not like uh, ice melting. That's not getting hot by itself. The environment is, is heating up the ice and it melts. Okay, some hints that it would be a physical change for sure. If it's only a state change, like if it's something that goes from solid to liquid or liquid to gas or gas to liquid, like it condenses um, or liquid to solid, any of those changes, that's just physical change. Okay. Um, and you could tell that it, it, it's easy to undo a physical change, you know, melting, freezing, evaporating, stuff like that. If it's just a shape change, if you bend it, or stretch it, that's a physical change, okay? If there's a size change, if you cut the whatever it is into smaller pieces, you grind it, um, you slice it, anything like that, 
that's just a size change. Even if you just dissolve it in something, you know, like um, if you take lemon juice and you mix it in with water, that's kind of a size change of the particles. You know, it's, it's just intermixing with the, uh, with the water. Or if you have a piece of rock candy and you dissolve that in water, it's still sugar. It didn't really change. It just changed the size of the piece of sugar from like one big piece to a bunch of little molecule sized pieces. Okay, so that, that doesn't count. That didn't change the molecule. Um, and if the properties stay the same. So that's, uh, you know, like the melting point, the freezing point, um, the color, different kinds of properties like that. If the, if the things like that stay the same, it's still the same stuff. Okay, uh, so we're going to go through now some... Uh, some examples to see if you can tell, if you can use what you just learned to tell these apart. So, you know, change of the five. Uh, we talked about that. I'm not going to talk about that. So, okay. So chemical or physical change. Look at these for a second. Pause the video if you want to. And think about, are these chemical or physical change? Okay. Pause if you want. Okay. Now I'm going to go over it. Okay. So frying eggs. This is a chemical change. I can tell that because there's a difference in smell, like a gas is released. Um, there's a difference in color, like the egg white goes from clear to being opaque. Um, and the, the yolks change too. They change from that sort of darker orange to a lighter yellow. So that's chemical change. Um, a lot of cooking is chemical change. That's why we cook, is it, it changes it. Uh, toast. So toast, it gives a change in color and change in smell, so that's a chemical change. Cracking eggs. Now cracking only uh, changes the size of the pieces. All the stuff is still there, so that's a physical change. Slicing bread, also that just changes the size of the pieces, so that's a physical change. Lighting a match. This is a chemical change. You can tell because there's a different smell, like that smell of a, of a burning match that's different. It's giving off energy, so that's a change in energy. And it changes color, like before and after being burned. That's different, so that's a chemical change. Roasting marshmallows, they have a different smell and they change color, so that's a chemical change, okay? Most cooking, um, except for like boiling water, is gonna be chemical change. Any kind of burning is gonna be chemical change. All right, rusty nails, um, nails getting rusty, that's a color change. Um, there's also a consistency change, like a, a property, like, um, like the nail itself holds together and then the rust does not, so that's a property change. Um, ice melting, that's a state change, so that is a physical change. Glass breaking. It, you're just changing the size of the pieces, so that's a physical change. Boiling water, physical change, because it's just a change in state. It's still water, it's just water vapor. Making lemonade, now this one's tricky. Uh, making lemonade is a physical change, because the lemon is still lemony, the sugar is still wait, uh, sweet, they're all just mixed together and they're dissolved. So it kind of looks like something different, but there really isn't any color change and there isn't any property change. All the different things are still in there doing what they do, tasting how they taste, looking how they look, smelling how they smell, um, but just together. Baking a cake. This is chemical change. The cake batter changes a lot. It changes in smell, it changes in color, it changes in its structure, but that's a little more risky, but it's, it's cooking, that's baking a cake. Mowing the lawn. Now this one is also can be tricky because there's a smell from that, but the smell is because you sort of ripped open the, the leaves of the grass and um, the juices inside that were just sort of trapped inside come out. So it's not changing anything uh, to get that smell. It's just cutting it in smaller pieces. So this is a physical change. Fireworks exploding, that's a chemical change. You have an energy release with the light and the sound coming out of there. Um, they're burning, so um, 
that's a chemical change. Digesting food. So digesting food isn't just chewing it up. It is actually making, uh, breaking up the molecules of the food. So the cheese gets broken down into its amino acids and its fats. And there's probably a little sugar in cheese, maybe not too much. Anyway, so that's chemical change because it's breaking it down the food on the molecular level. Okay, now remember, here's the key point. Chemical change is making or breaking molecules. Uh, remember the molecules are the structures made of atoms. So methane and oxygen changing into carbon dioxide and water. These are completely different substances with different properties. Okay, so this is a chemical change. Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.